Hey, stupid doodlers, how are you doing? Well, uh, I'm making this video because I had an email a couple of weeks ago from Carla, who is an art student. She has some questions to ask me. And the first one was, what is my artistic process? Well, I had to actually go and ask her what that meant. <laughs> and she said, she said, um, sort of, you know, what, how do I kind of plan, go about planning and creating uh, illustrations? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of tricky because I'm not I'm not kind of just an illustrator. So I, you know, because most of the work I do as an illustrator is to illustrate my own book. So I'm an author and illustrator, and so the process starts right at the moment of getting an idea for a story and the character, and I'll start sketching ideas for what the character will look like, and it all kind of builds together with the story. Um, and uh, and then <laughs> eventually, eventually I'll sort of get the character and it'll set me off. And I think eventually I'm ready to write a story and off I go. And then while I'm writing, I'm still sketching and then lots of editing <laughs> and eventually the story is written. And then it comes down to, to, to do the final illustrations. So then what happens? Um, then the process there is all the text gets set across the pages and uh, between myself and the art director, we kind of work out the spaces that I'm going to fill. Um, and But of course, all the time I've been writing, I've been having an idea of what those spaces will kind of look like, and what's going to go in those spaces. So, uh, so then I cut down and do a load of pencil sketches, uh, which I'll send eventually to my editor. And they will go, oh, have you thought of doing maybe this angle or that angle, which I hadn't have thought. So I'll sort of go back and have another look at that. And when we're all happy exactly how it's going to look, then I'll sit down and do the finished illustrations and send them off. And <laughs> that's that's kind of it. I mean, uh, it's as simple as that. It's just kind of getting on with it. So, so it depends whether I'm doing black and white or if I'm doing colour, I suppose. But um, the process I've come up with, the technical process I've come up with over the years, um, is with, uh, I, you know, I've used all sorts of things ac across the years. And, and the one thing I found was that if you use an eraser on nice watercolour paper, it kind of mucks up the surface and it roughs up the surface and it doesn't, the paint, watercolour paint doesn't kind of work too well on that. So um, so I've, I've gone through various iterations of light boxes. The first ones I made myself out of, out of whole fluorescent tubes and, and garden, uh, you know, seed trays and things like that, and bits of plastic on top. Uh, and so what I do is I do my pencil sketch and, and, and then I use my light table to kind of refine the pencil sketch. And then eventually I'll put my finished artwork paper on top of that and then I will draw through so it's, it's kind of endless tracing and refining I suppose is how it works um, and then um, and then if it's black and white then I'll just draw straight onto the paper if it's watercolour then I will stretch the paper out um, on a board and paint it so that's basically the technical process so there's another question which is how did I get started? Well, it's a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> where, where do you start saying where did you get started? I think I had an idea of being an illustrator quite a long time, so I kind of started out. Uh, a friend of mine lent me a little room above his shop, <laughs> and I sat there, and, and I would work for the local papers. Unless <laughs> you remember newspapers, <laughs> and, uh, and they would send me off to oh piano shops and you know barbers and all sorts of people who had little adverts, and I would have to go and kind of convince them to spend a little bit extra and have a drawing as <laughs> in the paper. <laughs> so I don't think many papers had had sort of artists drawing in them, and I was doing it all freelance and uh, not terribly successfully, and um, so that's kind of where I first attempted to be an illustrator so eventually I thought I'd better go to art college um, where I was very lucky with Colin McNaughton who's a children's book illustrator and picture book author he kind of came once a week and he kind of directed me into um, 
being a children's book illustrator and it kind of that's when I realized that all, all the things I was good at kind of came together as in doing that so uh, how did I get started well when I left art college I didn't really have a style and um, but I was hungry and so I would go and knock on people's doors with my portfolio I would go up to London and you know make appointments to see people and just went to see anybody I could think of and got all sorts of bits you know advertising agencies things like that um, it wasn't terribly satisfying <laughs> And uh, so eventually I kind of gave that up and went off to be a rock star. But that's where I kind of learned to work collaboratively, I think. So when I came back to it, I realised I needed to really work on my style. And I spent six months just working every day, at throwing out all the things I, I wasn't good at. Until I ended up with only about ten pieces of work, I should think, um, in my portfolio, um, which... I thought, yeah, this is good, I'm pleased with this. And then I went off to London again. I was treated very, very differently. Um, and things happened really quite quickly because they could see that I'd kind of developed and I got a kind of a style and it was consistent. And so people started giving me trial bits of work and they kind of realised that I would deliver on time and so they would give me bits more. And I started writing my stories and one thing and another, and, and it's just snowballed from there. So I think a lot of it is about, a lot of it is luck, being in the right place at the right time. It's about having developed your style. And it's about delivering and being consistent in, 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 in what you deliver. Um, and you know, <laughs> publishers, <laughs> publishers <laughs> want, the, want the work on time. They've got schedules to meet and they want to know that they can trust you. So uh, so that's kind of how I got started. How, how did I find my style? Well, that was just, just grinding away at it and throwing out things that I thought, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, don't do it again. Um, and every time it kind of feels right, go with it. That's kind of how you do it. And I suppose a lot of it is you've got to copy a lot of what other people do. You think, oh, I like that. How do they do that? You try it and... Uh, you, you don't copy it. Well, you do copy, but you know you're not 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 copying them. But what you do is by copying them, you learn something and you assimilate something into your style. So, so everybody's new original style has has all been an assimilation of other people's style before, plus a little bit of something extra. And it doesn't need to be a huge amount of something extra, <laughs> but it has to be you. I don't know if I miss style and how has it changed. I think I've actually come back to my style in a strange sort of way and I think I kind of lost my way for a while and I certainly lost my way with digital and uh, I, 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 I don't like doing digital artwork anymore. It's, it's so unsatisfying. It, it all just ends up in a file and it, it, there's nothing uh, nothing to hold on to. <laughs> there's nothing real. and and. Uh, and the screen and Photoshop and Illustrator and all those programs, they have a habit of homogenizing your work. So it all just looks digital. It doesn't really look like you somehow. Um, what is the most difficult part of my job? I suppose marketing, <laughs> getting yourself out there. It's very easy to sit on your own and draw all day and do lovely lovely stuff but to actually get work is something else again and you have to have a bit of a business head um, and you you kind of have to get out there and talk to people and, and network and, and just get on with it somehow <laughs> I think that's the most difficult part and what's the best part um, I think the best part is, is, is it's just that I can get on and do it myself and, and I'm my own boss um, and yeah, I think, and also being a, an author, a children's book author, I, I get invited to schools and things like that, which is kind of very rewarding. It's always sort of good fun telling stories and drawing with children. I really enjoy doing that and uh, a lot of, get a lot of feedback from that. Um, I think there was something else, it's, it's that thing, has it changed? Um, the world has changed since I started out of all recognition. <laughs> when, when I started, I would finish a piece of work and I would send <laughs> finish some roughs or something and I would pack them up in an envelope and I would send them off and it would take two or three days to get to wherever and then I would wait and I would wait and I would wait and every morning, I used to live in a little place out in the country and 
I could see the postman coming around the corner and he would have to he would have to park up and he would have to go and empty the letterbox and he would have to go to this house and then to that house and then to this house and then he'd finally come to my house and the gate would go <coughs> as he came in and I think, oh, this post, this post and <laughs> every day, half past eleven or whatever it was I'd be there waiting, waiting desperately oh, no post today so, and now you just press a button, ping um, the fastest work I've ever done was I was actually on the Eurostar and I got an email saying, can, can you do a rough cover? So I did it on the Eurostar in my sketchbook, <laughs> photographed it, emailed it on the phone uh, and I got an approval before the uh, Eurostar <laughs> got, got into Brussels, which is just ridiculous, isn't it? Um, uh, so that's kind of the main thing and and through the internet one thing or another there's an enormous amount of competition now the competition there's competition now like there never was um you know it was a kind of a magic secret world that i entered <laughs> there weren't any rules <laughs> and sometimes you would meet another illustrator and they sort of give you a few tips and things like that um, but you basically worked it out and now there are illustration courses and things where they kind of teach you exactly how you should be doing it and whatever and there's YouTube videos like this which are kind of giving you all the information so so that's kind of easier but there are more people wanting to be illustrators so uh, so that has changed and and of course YouTube uh, YouTube and things like that has presented so many more opportunities as well um, and, and just that kind of worldwide kind of connection with things has, has opened up so many more opportunities as well. So there you are, <laughs> I hope that answers some of your questions and you'll get something in there. If not, <laughs> let me know and I'll see if I can refine some of these questions, answers. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page. Click to find out more. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube. And in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.